will not stand on the mat, okay? I will not stand. This is my real height. Why is there a phone book here? This is our new advisor. This is uh, at Fiddy, uh, at Fiddy ETH. You guys can find him on the Twitterverse. He is our first official public advisor. We've got a couple more behind the scenes. Um, uh, the Duchess of DeFi and myself, BitBoy Crypto. Uh, Cassie and I are also going along with uh, uh, some other employees here. Uh, we're going to Dubai next week. We're meeting with at least one more advisor who's already agreed. So we're going to go make that official, which is big. You guys will find out who it is. Um, and it's it's not Carl or Chris, or it's not a YouTuber. We love those. I mean, we love the YouTubers out there, but that's not who it is. It'll be somebody that will really be able to help us in some big ways. Um, but we're also going to be doing some cool stuff. We're going to be going to Abu Dhabi for a day. We're going to be having a BitGet party the night of the 23rd. Uh, so a lot of big stuff while we're out there. We're doing a lot of Bitcoin stuff um, you know, for that. But uh, I know Fiddy in real life. He's a great dude. Uh, can't wait to see. Uh, he's already added a lot of value. Um, in a lot of different ways to what we're doing. Um, so super excited to uh, to announce that. If we could take out these lows, put in a lower low here, I'll kind of just show you. Uh, we do have some support down here. So I will look for a potential short-term move to the downside before getting another bounce. And then maybe that is where you get the daily starting to roll up. And that's able to push you back up to these prices uh, closer to that value area low at the levels I was just talking about. So, uh, you know, in the immediate short-term, four hour could bring us down just a little bit more. And if it does push us back into this white box, I will be looking for bullish confirmations to go long. And then obviously, Obviously, if that does wind up playing out, will uh, I will be looking to take profit here? And depending on what the charts look at look like at that point, um, if I am if it is looking like uh, it, we are probably going to continue to the downside and reject this level, I will look to short this level. Um, but if not, uh, I obviously will look to just lock in some profits on that long and then hold the rest uh, for some potential higher prices. But again, guys, be very careful if you're out there trading because there is likely going to be some crazy volatility coming in here uh, this week. Uh, but with that being said, guys, I think that's all. I got well, um real quick Frankie, yeah. I, I'm interested because we're going to talk about it it's like the first story DZ is going to talk about yeah, yeah. uh I know uh coin market cap has bitcoin like 47 percent dominance but mm -hmm. btc.d could you take a look at that chart real yeah. quick yeah yeah and and I want to hear what you think about the dominance it definitely looks like we're close to conquering we got really close to conquering 50 percent on btc.d but what are your thoughts what are you seeing on this chart do you think the altcoins can make a push or do you think that it, we're going to continue to move to the upside with the dominance uh, all right, let's see here. Coming on to the daily. So kind of what I was looking at on the dominance last time we looked here. Now, obviously, we did get a push to the upside here. Um, but something, you know, again, at least, you know, when you're looking at market cipher, which is one of the main things that I look at, uh, you know, you, you can see here with the money flow, although we did get this pump to the upside, money flow is still just kind of continuing to the downside. So more often than not, when you're looking at something like money flow, um, because it indi indicates the longer term trends, unless it takes a little bit for it to play out, especially when it kind of hovers down here a little bit until I see this money flow really start to uh, make higher highs and ho after higher high. Uh, that is kind of where I would expect, you know, a much, much higher push on the dominance here. Uh, but with the money flow just still bleeding out, I was kind of curious about this because uh, we looked at this recently uh, and money flow was coming out. Uh, but obviously we have gotten a push up here. Um, and kind of what I was expecting was a push up to the highs of uh, this range, right? We had this value area high right here coming in at about, uh, you know, 48.2%. Uh, and then we had these highs up here, you know, getting a little closer to 50%, about 48.88% uh, was expecting to come somewhere up in here before reversing. Um, so, you know, we could potentially see a rollover here as, uh, and then, you know, as the dominance starts to come down, we see that money flow cross over and then that would eventually bring the dominance down uh, likely a bit more there. Uh, and that probably, that would would likely give the alt room to run, uh, you know, but this stuff does take time to play out. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and stick with the money flow again until the money flow starts coming up and making new higher highs. I wouldn't expect anything too dramatic out of this. Um, and I would have to lean a little bit more, uh, a little bit more bearish uh, until again, that money flow starts to come back. 12 hour money flow did cross over into the green right as you got that move up. Um, but again, might take time to play out here, but again, you know, not possible for this to flip around, uh, but until it does 
does start doing that, I got to start, I, you know, I got to continue to lean that this, uh, this money flow is bleeding to the downside. So makes sense. Um, but yeah, guys, that's it. You got the levels of resistance and support and kind of what I'm expecting. Um, you know, watch that. If we do get a move up, watch that 200 week moving average for some strong, uh, strong resistance. And with that being said, Shout out to DZ. Oh, oh, uh, 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 I was going to do my outro because DZ is part of my, uh, my intro for my live show because we're right after ATB. And I always say shout out to my boy DZ. So shout out to my boy DZ. Back to him. Bing bang. I'm all right, uh, Algorand. Algorand and Flow crashed to all-time lows following SEC lawsuits. Uh, prices for a number of altcoins fell after they're name-checked by the SEC. Algorand, Flow, Polygon, Solana, Cardano, all these things fell pretty hard. They also saw significant declines here. Uh, Algorand and Flow traded hands at $0.09 cents and $0.45, cents, respectively. According to CoinGecko, both Algorand and Flow are down more than 60% from their $29 and $1.39 highs just in February. They're down 60%, not from the bull market top, from February. Toppling uh, more than 28% during a seven-day span this week brought the lowest price in both coins' histories. I bought, I market bought Cardano. The coin I bought before that, Algorand. I'm not mm. saying I'm a biggest fan of uh, their centralization or uh, you know what they got going on with uh, certain people uh, that, that used to be in the White House, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty bullish on those because of those reasons too. Hmm. It's newer tech and well, I, I don't know. I think big money can choose winners and if big money's back in it, hey, I, I, I might I mean, try Supposedly there's supposed to be bigger stuff coming out too, so. Okay, we'll see. supposedly. Yep. I mean, I don't know. AJ, AJ talked me into it. Okay, I'm yep. just going to blame AJ if it goes down. Well, All right, uh, so transition here. Couple, uh, couple Q and A's here. 120K yeah. portfolio, 25% ETH, 25% Bitcoin, 15% ADA and XRP, 10% algo file ICP, and then uh, 7% crow. Yeah, that math doesn't add up, right? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sitting here 65, 75, 85, 95. It should be 5% crow. Um, the rest, oh, yeah, now now we're well above. So you were already at 102%. And then you say the rest. <laughs> I'm just going to attack your math uh, this whole time. I'm not even going to talk about your portfolio. The rest is a mix in sand, OP, Matic, Quant, Ape, HBAR, and SWE, adding 1500 a month through 2023. I like the... Yeah, add fifteen hundred a month through the next six months. You will want to slow down as we get closer into the bull market. You're gonna then pause for six months, maybe you know, give or take a few months, and then you're gonna want to start selling uh, for about a six to twelve month period. I like it. I would say, uh, I think it's actually a pretty good portfolio. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of seven percent crow. I'd rather you know maybe go in some of the other that you have in the mix there. Matic, you know, I, I would maybe put in more L2s than crow there. But other than that, uh, besides crow, I, I like pretty much everything about that I'm seeing here. What about you? Yeah, I mean, no one can see it. I'm 25% ETH, 25% Bitcoin, 15% ADA, 15% yeah, XRP. Yeah, I'm looking. Uh... I'll go file ICP. All right. Yeah, I mean, it's solid. Mm -hmm. To each his own when you start getting into certain details, but I, I, there's some good uh, diversification there. And yeah, another question from Bitfrog. Why do coins inflate? What is the point? Most of the time, the point is the team to raise funds. Uh, so they're they're releasing new tokens, selling them onto the market, and then, uh, you know, taking that money and, you know, maybe operations. Maybe it's Lamborghinis. We don't know. Uh, with Bitcoin... It's uh, part of his distribution mo uh, model. You, Satoshi, you know, at first it's him and some buddies, and then it's 10 people, then it's 100 people, then it's 1,000 people. You don't want to release all 21 million Bitcoin at that point. That would be uh, probably not good for the health of the network. Uh, what else do we got? What else do we got? Uh, you know, Ada, high, next bull run. Good question Ooh, there. Good question. Risky question for me to answer. Not many people would answer this question. DZ will answer this question if... You can get these likes up. Where are we at right now? Uh, I'm looking. Okay, we did get over a thousand. I'll go ahead and answer. <sighs> so our previous all time high, you know, some charts are going to say, you know, three dollars nine. We'll, we'll just say roughly three ten, three twenty five, shortly above three dollars. You think a little above? You think the high of the no, no. I'm, I'm saying previous. 
Previous was three. Oh, okay. Right. So next time, I'm looking at a 2.5x ish. So I'm going to be looking at around 750. I don't okay. think we can hit ten dollars. I think there's a lot of sell pressure at six dollars ninety cents for mm -hmm. obvious reasons. A lot of sell pressure at seven, eight, nine, and so that's why I don't think we'll get to ten. Uh, can we use the First Amendment to protect crypto use as free speech and protest to current economic policies and structures? Regulation has a chilling effect on our speech. Well, uh, all Pulse X sacrifices was labeled as an exercise in free speech. And so that is a argument that has been used in the crypto sector and the crypto industry before. I don't know if it's been tested in court though, but to mm. me, code is speech. It, it can't be any more clear. It's, it's freaking letters, speech. It is speech. It is speech, folks. Uh, it reminds me of the story. I've talked about the story before. The guy had the schematics for a 3D printed gun and the mm. government tried to say it was illegal. So you know what he did? He printed out the code and put it on a t-shirt and then wore the t-shirt. said, it's free speech. What can you do? So uh, yeah, to me, free speech. Uh, DYDX, how your next bull run? I'm not sure. I'm not too familiar with that protocol, so I can't really no. give you a good uh, prediction there.